Hello everyone, today we will be talking about a sensitive subject, a subject which I think is personal for me, for you, and for everyone that is honest about the you know inherent struggles of existence. That is the experience of losing hope and the hope to find that hope. And today specifically, I will be talking about the the practical psychological mechanisms that you can utilize to to tap into that hope when you feel like all hope is lost. Um, it doesn't mean that this is a universal answer. It doesn't mean that there aren't other answers, but it is a perspective which is I'm I'm sure it's not talked about a lot. It's not talked about usually in the way that I'm going to talk about, which is why I believe it's very helpful to at least consider something like this. Um, by the way, I have released a free video course that you can check out in the link below. It talks about the three fundamental principles of self-regulation and self-transformation. So how do you control these emotions? How do you become more control of your mind? And how do you guide the development, your psychological development, right? So that you can live the life that you wanna live. Check it out in the link below. It's relevant to this topic. Now regards to hope, I really want to start off by asking a question, which is where do you put your hope into? And I think a lot of us, what we do instinctively is we put our hope into things outside of us. What do I mean by that? Usually when we live life, we judge our experience based on the results that we are getting, which makes sense, of course, right? But it creates a dynamic of high dependency on the external circumstances, which means that we become used to that and we we hinge our psychological well-being on the way that the external world rewards us for our actions or whatever. Now that's fine, well and good if you are constantly getting that approval in any shape or form, right, from life, then you feel good. But there's a few issues with that. You usually only get, I mean, you have to be pretty lucky to only keep getting positive results in life and also probably pretty average or below average because if you have huge goals, you will immediately encounter things with just like, you just can't solve it in a month. You, it'll probably take years to, to do something, to create a big business, to whatever, to find the right partner or to build the right relationship, build a all, all these difficult things, right? Real achievements take a lot. And usually people get disheartened because they do things, they do things, and they're used to this deep ingrained thinking that everything that I have to do has to give this benefit to me right? And then I will feel good. So the first thing that I would like to challenge you on is why exactly are we considering these external rewards, external experiences as the proper indication on how to feel? If you get on the journey or if you are on the journey already of learning to self-regulate, learning to master your mind, soon or you already discovered that wait a second i mean there is a degree of control and influence that i have over this mind and if you are on this path long enough you start realizing something else which is isn't it interesting that if you work on this enough you kind of gain the ability to override these situations so something bad might be happening to you but you might find ways to rephrase that and go you know what fine, fine, I'm still gonna keep going or whatever. This mechanism is, I think, one of the examples of self-mastery, one of the examples of self-regulation. I think the ultimate form of self-regulation is the ability to be more self-stimulating, okay, rather than just reactive to the things that are happening. Now, things that can be happening inside of you, outside of you, right, but you're just constantly reacting the better option, the more developed option is understanding that you have a degree of influence over those events. So when all hope feels lost, you have to analyze a few things, which the first one, like I mentioned, is where are you putting your hope into? Because if you're putting your hope into, into just getting these positive results from the thing that you're doing, it's like, yeah, but 
logically speaking, there's going to be periods where it's going to be tough, right? Because some things just take time. And, and guess what? At some things you will fail. Because guess what? You're not perfect in all of the areas, right? But if you have the capacity to self-regulate, to tap into your internal motivational systems, you will be able to overcome that. So now we're getting into, okay, so I, I lost the hope, right? It's a bit of a desperate period for me. Where do I find hope? And the answer, at least one answer, at least something that I found very helpful to me and it helped me tremendously in, in many, many times is finding that hope in yourself. And I know this sounds pretty vague and pretty cheesy, but what do I mean by that? Let's backtrack a bit. When you think about yourself, about your experience of life, how do you know that you're doing good right now and how do you know that you're doing bad right now? The typical answer is, you'd say, well, I, I got this much salary, I, I tried to do this, but I didn't do it, I, this, that, that. yes, but what is beyond that? Beyond that is, well, I feel good or I feel bad, right? Which is why serious drug addictions are attractive to people that are in bad life situations. You take some heroin, you're feeling great, right? Now, this is a radical example, but it means that, and the person that does that, right, they go, dude, this feels awesome. Uh, man, it, it's worth living in that life. Now, of course, you don't want to follow that because we know of the long-term destructive nature of that. And it is a bit of an illusion. But what it illustrates is that our feelings and our inner sensations dictate what we feel about life. There are people that are going through the same challenges as you are, but because of a, a kind of a different internal configuration, they're, they are the, viewing it as, you know what, but I can still do it, I can still persevere, and so on and so forth. So what I am leading to is that if you allow yourself to explore the possibilities of self-regulation, you will discover that you are capable of creating positive, peaceful, etc., similar states of being inside yourself. Now, what does that mean? It means that the hope that you are looking for outside can kind of be generated inside of you because you're basing everything on how you feel. Well, what if you learn how to feel better? which is possible. So imagine this, you're living your life, you have to take actions. So imagine we have like a pyramid, which at the top of it is, I guess, results that you wanna get. Okay, well results depend on your actions, which is basically the middle of the pyramid. Okay, makes sense, you have to take certain actions to get certain results. But in order to take certain actions, you have to have a stable psychological foundation which will allow you to maintain hope, maintain a kind of energy and fortitude over the long term, over the difficulties that you experience. So if you want to understand what makes you tick, what makes you hopeful, right, for the future, what makes you have that faith almost, which will allow you to keep taking actions, to not give up, which will in the long term allow you to get the results that you want, well, you're looking at the fact that, well, you need to create that foundation for yourself. And my argument is, when I discovered this element inside myself, because I wouldn't call myself uh, uh, as someone who had inherently too much hope or, you know, positivity and so on and so forth, which is part of the reason why I got into this, part of the reason why I wanted to learn to self-regulate and do all this stuff, is because I understood that if I don't have this foundation, it'll make it very hard for every area of my life. It doesn't matter what it is. And I guess I don't want, I would love to live, you know, a more productive life. So I started working on that foundation. I started learning to self-regulate, learning to create these, you know, deep psychological, emotional anchors that I can come back to. And that ultimately I know that they're there because I know that I experienced that right? I have those associations, I have those reference experiences, which then allows me to have another avenue of quote unquote hope, right? Because I know that if I get into a hard place, 
I go there, I sit down, I do my processes and all that. There's something inside of me that I can tap into. And I think this is at least one of the answers for someone who is struggling, who is, is, is looking, where do I find this, this a bit of light in this darkness? And my answer would be, you can find that light inside of you. And in fact, if you really look, you might find that that light might be the most permanent thing that you can even have in this unpredictable reality that we are in. So what I invite you to do is to just think about this, explore this possibility. Where do your actions, where, where, where does your life, where is your life experienced really? Uh, you might find that it's experienced inside of you. And if it's experienced inside of you, well, clearly, these subjective experiences can be influenced because you can think about this and feel good. You can think, think about this and feel bad. And that is, I think, the basis from which you can start accepting the fact that there is such a thing as self-regulation. There is such a thing as, as guiding your psychological development. And there is such a thing as being able to influence yourself psychologically. And that is a very powerful skill to have. And by the way, if you think about it, think about all the sort of positive, successful people that you know, all of them pretty much have that. It's just maybe they they naturally develop that in their family or whatever. Maybe it's a part of genetics, part nurture, who knows? But from my experience, it is something that you can learn, okay? So do not lose hope because you have it inside of you. All you need to do is to tap into it. Now, if you want to tap into it, again, I do recommend check out that free video. It covers the three fundamental principles around self-regulation and around self-transformation or self-rewiring in this case. And it'll give you like a, a general broad understanding. Oh, these are the main things that cover pretty much everything that you can do with your mind. Okay. Uh, check it out in the link below. And of course, if you want some personal one-on-one -on -one help and you want to you know, be trained, be coached into learning to self-regulate, you can reach out in the same link uh, below and inquire about that as well. Thank you for watching and until next time.